briefly. I apologize for the dress, but I just found out right now. Plus, we're getting some questions on what happened to the video that we did uh, analyzing the research in reference to ivermectin and basically the data that was extrapolated from an in vitro research. YouTube pulled it. YouTube pulled it, and you have to sympathize with YouTube. You have to understand that you're looking to try to protect people from deception. At the same time, too, they recognize that their model may be overfitting, and they admitted it themselves, where censorship, which is the outcome, no matter how you want to word it, uh, may happen uh, unintentionally. But in this case, we appealed it, and they still shot it down because what you end up happening is you have people which are not trained in don't want to hypothesis, outcomes, p-values, confidence intervals, hazard ratios. They don't have any biostatistics background. So you're expecting a bunch of kids to determine what is actually science and what is not and what is deception and what is. Well, in this case, unfortunately, to the research of Monash University, an article which was published globally on many peer review sites, and that was this one, possible coronavirus drug identified by Australian scientists, is an outcome pulled, bottom line, in YouTube's effort to protect its community, censored. Again, great respect for YouTube, it is a free platform, but sometimes we expect too much. And so the question we really have to ask ourselves is, is YouTube in times of crisis an adequate place in which to present research data especially for example if you put in the abstract the desired outcome may be a cure mitigation of basically side effects or mitigation of the severity of a disease what how do you actually word research when you have to look at the potential outcome do you just not mention the outcome Henceforth, YouTube may not be an ideal place, at least during times of crisis, but I do sympathize with the, a lot of the heads of YouTube on the balance that they have to make. So, what we did is we took this research review and posted it on an external site, in this case, Vimeo. So, for those who are looking for it, we didn't pull the video. I know I had a long, a long blog associated with it as far as comments and so on and so forth. No one got blocked. We just basically after YouTube banned the video, we basically just moved it to Vimeo. And so you can find it there, and I'll link that down below. But however, though, the information that you see here, no matter how we word it, no matter how we plead it to YouTube, and look at all the misleading content, we went through the entire checklist, nothing was violated, didn't make a difference. So basically, what we have here is generally that science is a potential danger to the public, at least in times of crisis. And I understand YouTube's position as far as trying to think for the public uh, and trying to protect them at the same time. But however, at the exact same time, our objective was not to make any claims or have anybody do anything dangerous. Our objective was to get that research in ivermectin recognized so basically it could encourage further investigation and to see if the outcome in reference to this medication is basically, uh, how I would describe it, favorable. All right, outside of that too, just to show you that we did actually try that, we did not just do anything out of, the, you know, out of sensationalism. Uh, basically further review, same thing, rejection, video content restrictions, and at the same time you'll also find that we actually posted uh, on the blog, which you have to give YouTube credit, they do actually allow these conversations to take place on their, um, uh, on their forums, although they tend to go nowhere. Is YouTube now censoring university research into COVID-19 and something called overfitting a model? You have biostatistics, statistics, you have data analytics, and you have machine learning, so on and so forth. When you overfit something, you're actually basically, you're pulling in too many and based in the terminology be false positives, meaning it was not a violation at all. It's just that in order to play it safe, they ramped up that algorithm, and boom, research into ivermectin, not there anymore. Again, that's the kind of answer would happen to ivermectin. You can follow the link itself. I can't say anything in regard to it because I don't want to jeopardize 
a second uh, potential uh, video to be withdrawn. But with all due respect for the hard work of the individuals at Google and YouTube, please keep in mind this is basically a discussion into whether YouTube forum itself should be and can be a safe place for researchers in order to discuss uh, basically potential betterment of humankind without the risk of being pulled from an individual probably not trained very effectively in everything from p-values confounding you know so on and so forth as always gratitude follow the link uh, to someplace safe to review the video that's where it's at you can comment there and thank you for letting me rant and I look forward to seeing you all in a few days when we do the next video catch you next time bye